Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing super well. If you don't know me yet, I'm Emma and this is the Emma in Costa Rica channel where you will get all sorts of information about Costa Rica from tips, ideas, uh, different things to do, as well as the occasional lifestyle vlog. So if you're interested in that kind of thing or planning an upcoming trip to Costa Rica or planning your life down here in Costa Rica, hit the subscribe button and I would love to see you guys around more often. So a few weeks ago, we came up with the video about driving in Costa Rica and I feel, I personally felt like the video was a little bit negative <laughs> and I think some of you maybe have gotten that vibe but also some of you really agreed with a lot of the points that I mentioned so I'm happy that the video is out but I did want to come out with a video that maybe can be a little more helpful for you guys in terms of what you should know and things to keep in mind for driving in Costa Rica. So let's talk about it. We've got a few different tips for driving in Costa Rica. So first things first, driving in Costa Rica drives on the right side, just like in North America. We're not in UK, we're not in Japan. So if you know how to drive in the North America, in the North America, then you are fine to drive here in Costa Rica. <laughs> also in terms of traffic signs, a lot of them are fairly similar to what you might see in North America. We've got the stop sign with the octagon, I think it's an octagon, with the red. And instead of saying stop, it's going to say alto. I'm gonna go over actually, I have like a list here of a few different signs that you guys might see along the way if you're driving here and maybe if you don't understand Spanish too well, this is gonna help you out quite a bit. So let's go over the list. So alto is stop. If you guys don't know the word uh, velo well, velocity in Spanish, which is gonna, you're gonna see on the sides of the highways or on streets of the maximum velocities, right? So that's gonna be velocidad. Usually on the highways, it's about 80 kilometers an hour. Oh, that's another thing. We use the metric system here, so we don't use miles. So if you guys are from the States and you're comfortable with miles, uh, start practicing with the kilometer thing. <laughs> Espacio means slow, go slowly. And that's usually gonna be because there's a crossing or um, a tight corner or animals in the area. Reductor, that means a speed bump. So slow down before you go flying in the air for a few seconds. I know that feeling in your stomach is never very fun when you're kind of like <laughs> Ceda el paso, it means to yield. And this is usually when you're gonna be coming onto a highway or something like that. And don't expect too many people to yield for you if there's like it's kind of complicated like if there's an entrance to a main road or something like that and you're already going uh, people will try to just cut in like they don't care about you or like the fact that they need to be yielding they will just go and yeah that's i i, I personally find the education for driving is not the best here um, I mean, the word education is not maybe the correct word. I don't know, kind of like formalities of driving etiquette. Etiquette, that's the word. Yeah, people just don't. <laughs> so just be aware of that. Don't get too frustrated and be patient. So there's also Puente Angosto, which means narrow bridge or anywhere that you see the word angosto. It's gonna mean that something that, that is coming up is going to be narrow. So just be aware of that. Um, and then the salida is the exit, and uh, that could be like the exit to a highway or whatever it is. Most highways are in San Jose, so otherwise it's just gonna be like one main road to get to where you're trying to get. Um, there's very few routes to get to like main destinations and stuff like that. So normally you'll be stuck to like one or maybe two different options. Um, but always be aware of the two options because sometimes, like for example, you can get to Capos either from the highway, like the concrete highway, or you can go across San Jose through the mountains. And that's not necessarily recommended because it's easy to get lost, there might not be signal. And if it starts raining, you could get into a very dangerous and tricky situation. So it's better to stick to the main roads, not the off-road options. So the highways and major roads mostly in San Jose or like coming out and coming into the city are, well, there's quite a few that are told. And those here are called peajes. 
and basically it's a small amount that you have to pay in a few different stalls that create intense amounts of traffic you basically pay a small amount say you're coming up to it it's this like big thing that walks off the highway with lanes one is gonna say quick pass or two but some might say quick pass and that basically means you need to have a small device that you have already prepaid your amount and you can just whip through most tourists are not going to have this rental cars do not come with this so you're going to have to get into the lane that says manual and you're going to go into that one you can pay with card or you can pay with cash i recommend you save all of your coins to pay for that because that way you have you get rid of all your coins <laughs> just when you're doing that make sure you have your money ready as you're coming up i mean you don't have to but it will make traffic a lot smoother and you will not be holding anyone up usually to know the amount it is it will say there's usually a sign like quite a few meters ahead that will say um automobile liviano and that's usually just like a regular car so with that it'll say the amount which is it's usually under a thousand colones uh, that might go up from the time that I'm talking about this, but let's talk about now in 2024. Yeah, the majority are under like 900 colones. So just get your coins ready and hand it to the person. They'll give you a little receipt. You can keep this receipt. And in the case that something happens while you are using these toll roads, it has a phone number on the receipt that you can call. And there is like service that will come and help you if you're in an accident or anything like that. Try your best to avoid getting into the lane for the quick pass. If you don't have it, you will cause such a commotion and a hassle for everyone else who's trying to quickly whip through because the lever will just not open for you. And now you will have to figure out how to back up and get back into the manual lane because <laughs> It's, it's, it, it turns out being a nightmare. All these cars will start honking at you um, because you, quote, should know better. Yeah. So yeah, try not to make that mistake. It's embarrassing, it's uncomfortable, and awkward for getting out because you've got a lineup of cars behind you. Gas stations here in Costa Rica are full service. You do not have to pay them extra. They will fill up their tank, fill up your tank, and, or, you know, you tell them the amount that you want. Uh, you can either say the amount of money that you're going to give them, or you can say full and they'll usually know how much that is they'll fill it up and then they'll tell you the amount at the end and you can pay with card you can pay with cash us or colones colones are pretty much always going to be better to pay with nowadays because the dollar is really not great here and in general they will pick an exchange rate that is really not convenient for you if you're using dollars. So it's much better to use colones. And at a lot of gas stations, I don't think you can actually serve your own gas because there's like, you need like a special chip, like an identification so that the company knows which person is serving which car. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, going back to that, like you don't have to give them tips or anything like that. Even though it might seem like they're going out of their way to do their like the service, um, it, I've actually heard that it can cause issues amongst the employers and the employees if they start receiving tips because it looks like they're starting to like, like, like they're doing something wrong, which is weird. I don't fully understand it, but I've heard that it can cause issues. So don't feel like you should be tipping people at the gas station because they're just doing their job at the end of the day, unless they do like a really fantastic job. Like you don't ask them to wash your windows, but they're dirty or they put air into your tires and all that fun stuff without even really like, like they just do it automatically. Like they're just trying to give you really good service. Then okay, yeah, that maybe warrants a tip, but yeah. Oh, and these are all things that you should be kind of aware of as well. Like if you feel that your windows are really dirty, like the windshields are super dirty, um, you can just ask them to clean it and they'll do that super quickly. Or if you feel like the air in your tires are getting low because you've been a little too adventurous, then I just ask them to um, check the air in your tires and they might ask you to what pressure. I think we usually say like 32 or something like that, but it'll depend on your car. So uh, yeah. In terms of rules um, for driving in Costa Rica, it's pretty similar to most places. The only thing is that it's a lot more relaxed here and there's actually little to no regulation of these rules. 
So for example, you have to wear a seatbelt, no drinking and driving, um, you have to be 18 to drive, and what else? No cell phone, did I ever say that? But yeah. I know people who drive without licenses. I know people who just stare at their phone the entire time they're driving. I know people who never wear a seatbelt and they have never had issues with the police. Um, and considering that there's like three or four different levels of police, it's pretty incredible. I mean, a lot of the time, the driver police, the traffic police, they're more intense in San Jose or in like the tourist towns during holiday weekends because that's when people are gonna be drinking and driving and they can fill their quota, basically. <laughs> but in all reality, in the more small towns, you're not gonna see much regulation at all. And um, I wish we would, but it's just not a thing that happens. So you need to be a little bit more alert and aware of what's going on around you if you're not used to driving here in, in the smaller towns because people just do whatever they want. <laughs> oh, and I believe the legal rental age, like if you're coming here to visit and you wanna rent a car, I believe the age is 21. So just in case. Road conditions. This one is fun because Costa Rica is such an adventurous country and has so many different weather situations and climates that the conditions are constantly changing. In the cities and larger towns and all that, it's gonna be all paved for the most part. Um, there's usually sidewalks uh, in more or less like the more, I don't know how to explain it. Like if there's really big roads and like lots of shops around, then there's sidewalks. If not, Okay, yeah, sidewalks are not all that common, let's be real. But yeah, in San Jose, it's com pretty much completely paved, except for like, you know, outside of the downtown area or like outside of the city, because there's lots of San Jose that's like up in the mountains as well. And then in the more rural areas, you'll have like one or two main roads um, or like the towns that will be paved for the most part. But like, if you turn off of that or if you go down random roads, don't expect it to be paved. It's mostly just gonna be like dirt, rock, gravel, um, yeah, and stuff like that. We're slowly getting to the point where there's more pavement in areas, certain areas, but it's just not, it's a lot to keep up with. So it's not happening too, too quickly. Whether roads are paved or not, you will come across a lot of potholes. And this is more or less uncontrollable because of the amount of rain that we get. The water really saturates the concrete, cracks it, and creates hazards. Awesome. I also find that on the main highways where big trucks are passing by a lot, because of the weight of the trucks, the roads kind of just like fall apart on their own. And as we all know, Costa Rica has one of the highways that connects Panama to Nicaragua. So we do get a lot of big freight trucks. Oh, and on the tolled roads, you will not see quite as many potholes because they are obviously being paid for upkeep and all that kind of stuff. Depending on where you're traveling, you might also come across roads that lead you into a river, basically. And this is a lot more common in the rainy season, but it also depends on where you are, as I mentioned. Like if you're going down to Osa, um, or even I've heard of like some places in Guanacaste, like you gotta be careful because there's roads that you have to cross a river. And just know that rental cars do not um, have any coverage for water damage. So if you plan on crossing rivers, think about that beforehand. But yeah, like to get to certain places, you have to cross the river, but especially in the rainy season, you have to be super careful with that kind of thing because we can get flash flooding or like, you know, if it's raining, a river can turn within the snap of a finger because there's just so much water coming down from the mountains. And I've seen on the news during the rainy season, like people just don't think twice. They just follow another car like blind sheep and their car gets taken by the river and they have to literally like leave their car and somehow escape with the rushing water all around them. And I'm sorry, but that, that is not my idea of a fun vacation. Like, yes, that could be the adventure of your life, but you could die and it is not safe. So 
if you ever feel unsafe about crossing a river or if you think it's too deep, just don't do it and try to find a different route or contact your hotel and see what they would suggest. So speaking of rivers and flash flooding and potholes, weather conditions can really affect your driving here, right? Because not only is there lots of rain in certain areas at certain times of the year, but there's also falling boulders in certain areas, especially when it starts drying out a lot. Um, the rainy season also causes landslides. I've seen waterfalls coming down from the mountains onto the highways. You know, you could be driving literally through cloud, especially on your way to Paris Saladon. Ooh, that gets a little creepy because you're like winding around so much and you're, you can't see five feet ahead of you. Fog, especially at nighttime, gets pretty bad. And yeah, so a lot of these things do come more so with the rainy season, which is from basically the end, like mid-May until about mid-November, December, early December-ish. So if you are driving around in the rainy season, just be a little bit more aware of your surroundings, maybe, check the news like the actual news to see if there's any big storms coming through because the news will know a bit better than the applications because applications usually will just tell you like it's gonna rain all day and every day which it might not if you are driving in the rain season use extra precautions uh avoid driving during really bad storms because there's also times where it rains so hard that you cannot see um the roads will flood out and stuff like that so just again be patient take your time with things and yeah Try to have fun with it, but be safe. Other things you might find on the road will be animals, right? Because you are driving through a lot of areas that are either gonna be rural or very, very foresty. So especially down in the Osa area or like in the South Pacific, you're gonna find a lot of wild animal crossing the roads. I mentioned this in my previous driving video that unfortunately one of the most common animals that I see as roadkill is the incredible ant eater. Yeah, very horrible. I've also seen a lot of raccoons lately. Uh, sloths are often caught crossing the road, so drive safely, don't drive too quickly, um, especially in the more foresty areas. And also in areas with a lot of farmland, you gotta be a bit careful because cows can come out of their fence and just be walking on the road. <laughs> Wildlife and different kinds of road conditions that are all completely natural causes so you can't really predict or control what's gonna happen. Just use extra caution, that's all I can say. And if you do see wild animals, on the road or near the road while you're driving, don't stop out of nowhere to dash out and go and see it. Safely find a place to slow down and stop and go and watch it. One final thing to talk about with road conditions is that it gets dark very early. So basically every single day year round, the sun is gone by about 6 p.m. and that means it's gonna be nighttime. So. I would say it's okay to drive like shorter distances for drive um, for night driving. I personally prefer driving at night, but I don't necessarily recommend it for someone who doesn't know where they're going, um, isn't familiar with the roads and stuff like that. And also the conditions can get a little bit rough. So if you do have to drive at night, drive really slowly, really carefully, but try to avoid it for the most part. In the case that you get a flat tire or you have some sort of mechanical issue with the car, I guess first things first would be to call the rental company or at least get that dealt with. If you have a flat tire, go to the nearest taller or mechanico who can help you to change it or fix it or patch it until you can get back to your rental agency and tell them so that they can replace the tire. Uh, if you have any other mechanical issues, I would probably recommend just contacting the company directly and they will tell you how to move forward. Let's talk about safety on the road. As I mentioned, there's all sorts of rules here, but they are very rarely followed. So like, you'll notice a lot of people passing the speed limits, um, passing when they shouldn't, or passing unsafely, not using their, their directional lights, not, um, not, warning anyone that they're gonna stop out of nowhere. So this is something that you just wanna keep in mind. If you are going to pass someone also, because it happens a lot that there's like a big truck or like a farm, a farm truck, or like, you know, just a large vehicle basically that is going so slow 
and you just wanna pause it because otherwise you're gonna get there tomorrow, wherever you're going. <laughs> Do it safely. Make sure you're using your lights. Maybe not everyone else is gonna be using their lights. They're just gonna be whipping past but use your lights, do what you need to do and just double check or like triple check, like be like 200% that when you are going to pass that there's nobody behind you who's going to be trying to overtake you and the car in front. Because I find that locals tend to drive a little bit with a lack of patience and yeah, it just happens a lot. So just be extra careful when you are passing if you must if you must pass at all. Another thing is if you are going to stop your car out of nowhere, make sure you use your emergency light so that the cars behind you know that you are stopping for a reason. It could be to let somebody cross the street. It could be because there's an animal in front of you, whatever it might be, use your emergency lights just so that everyone else behind you is aware and then they won't come zooming past you and kill whatever is trying to cross or is on the road or cause some sort of issue. One of the things about the emergency lights though is that People here use them for pretty much anything and everything. You know, it's helpful a lot of the time because if they're slowing down for a reason, they're gonna put their lights on. Or if there's traffic up ahead that they quickly had to stop, they'll put their lights on so that you know, okay, I, I gotta slow down too. Sometimes they'll just put it on because they're just gonna stop in the middle of the road to talk to their friend. <laughs> Which I mean, if they do it, maybe you can do it too, that's okay but just don't get frustrated. Um, that's just the way it is. And yeah, you will notice a lot of people on the road in general. This is mainly because there are no sidewalks and it's also a good way for some people to make a living by selling things in the street. If there's lots of traffic and stuff like that, you'll actually notice this a lot um, at the peajes, the toll booths, that there's lots of people trying to sell water and snacks. By all means, you can buy them, but yeah. People are just constantly in the streets crossing however they can because it's just not very pedestrian friendly here in general. Like I said, in San Jose and inside of like the town centers, there's sidewalks. But other than that, there's really not too much. In saying that, because there's more people on the road, you might also want to just be a little bit more precautious. And while you're in the car driving, or if you're stopping at stoplights and stuff like that, have your car doors locked while you're inside, just in case. I'm not gonna say that something's gonna happen, someone's gonna open the door and try to rob you, but it's always safer to have it locked than to not. Something that you always need to have with you while you are driving is your valid driver's license and your passport with your valid tourist stamp. Having that tourist stamp is basically a way of proving that you are legally there in the country and your license is only valid in to use in this country as long as your tourist visa stamp is valid. So just have that in mind and it has to be the physical items, no photocopies or anything like that. They will not accept that and they will likely give you a ticket. In the case that you have a ticket where you get a ticket for doing something, <laughs> What you need to do is contact your car rental company right away and pay them so that they can pay the ticket. That might be a different process for every company. So the best thing to do is contact your company and tell you how to move forward. Also, if you feel intimidated by a police officer or if you feel really uncomfortable, you can ask for their phone number, their contact, their name, um, their department, all that fun stuff so that if they're doing something wrong, you can report them. If you don't speak any Spanish and you just have no idea what's going on, uh, just expect and have ready your passport and your license just in case, because that's likely what they're gonna be asking you for. There's times where police do these sort of checks, especially during holiday seasons, where they will stop random cars and ask for your details, or you know, they could be looking for something very specific, like something happened and now they're looking for evidence or whatever. They're usually not gonna bother you as long as you're not doing anything wrong. And yeah, just don't be afraid and just tell them, no hablo espanol, me no Spanish, whatever that might be. They'll usually send you on their merry way, on your merry way, but there is also an English line and the police have access to this if they need it. So in that case, um, don't be nervous, just go with the flow. Oh, and if you are in an emergency, 911 is the emergency line, just like in North America. So if there's an accident or if you see something or something that you need to report, whatever it is, um, you can call 911.
If you do plan on driving in Costa Rica, you definitely want to make it as easy as possible. Get a car that's going to have a GPS, maybe a rental that comes with a SIM card so that you have access to a phone and get a car that is suitable for your destinations, right? So you don't want to go and get a low lying car if you need a four by four to get to your mountain villa, right? So make sure you know where you're going, research these kinds of things before you go so that you make sure you know what kind of car you will need to get to the places that you are planning to go to. A lot of the time, you, you probably won't need a four by four for quite a few destinations, but there are some that you will need. So yeah, just be aware of that. But most places that I've been to do not require a four x four and you can kind of get away with it with just a regular SUV. And most roads that are four x four only will specifically state on a little sign four x four only. <laughs> if your car rental doesn't come with a SIM card, I would highly recommend getting one regardless. They're cheap and easy. You just go to the Claro or the Movistar store and tell them um, that you need a card so that you can make calls, whatever, and they will ask you how many days you want it for, a different range of options with prices and how long they function for. And it's super easy, they'll install it for you and everything, and that way you'll, you should download WhatsApp, you can download Waze, you can download Google Maps, all of these apps that are really great for traveling around and finding places that you need to go to. I really like Waze as an application for getting places because it also gives you like the time destination, uh, the time, estimation estimate and um, it will tell you if there's traffic or what's happening if there is a bunch of traffic etc etc one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that drivers tend to really ride your tail a lot here um, it seems like they're really trying to get somewhere with a lot of pressure don't be too intimidated by this if you feel like they're really pushing you to move just keep going at the pace you are willing to go at don't go too fast because they're pushing you. They will pass you if they have to, and they likely will. And don't be afraid of it. Yeah, just let them do their thing and try not to do any super quick stops because they will likely back end you. So yeah, just be careful of that. Also, don't be super surprised if people try to kind of like inch between you and the car that's ahead of you in the case that they're passing and they did it at a bad time and there's an oncoming car. I mean, I, I, I really don't like it when people do this and I wouldn't say give them space, but obviously it's better than watching an accident go down. So yeah, but don't be surprised. They might not even put their lights on to say like, oh, like I'm coming through or, or they won't even like wave their hand for a thank you, nothing. Like they will just expect to take that space and that's that. Yeah, not yielding. Um, they won't give the right of way to the car that's already driving in the lane kind of thing. Um, no directional lights, not too many thank yous and stuff like that. People do tend to drive quite aggressively here. Don't be intimidated, just drive with patience, be comfortable at your own speed and pace, obviously always in a safe manner. And yeah, be extra alert don't drink and drive because a lot of people do that and a lot of accidents happen because of it. I don't recommend that at all. Please, like if you're gonna drive here, do it responsibly. So for the final point, should you rent a car? Yes, I think you most definitely should. It gives you so much freedom and ability to just do whatever you want, whenever you want. Depending on how many destinations you plan on going to, you will likely end up spending a little bit less than you would on shuttles because I do find that the shuttles can add up pretty quickly. And yeah, for me, it's just, it's the freedom more than anything. Although some people do get very nervous with driving here. Um, and it, it is, it's very intimidating. But having your own car just gives a whole different level to being here in Costa Rica. And it's a different experience as well, right? So. I definitely recommend it. When you are renting a car, what I highly recommend is just research the company that you're renting it with. Go with something that's trustworthy and reliable and has been around for quite a few years just to make sure you are not getting ripped off in any sort of way and that you're getting the best deal possible for your situation. And always, always read the agreement completely before signing anything. All right, guys, I think that's pretty much it. I think those are pretty much 
the best tips I can kind of give you guys. Uh, let me know if I missed anything, put it down in the comments. And if you have any opinions or anything you want to say about this, again, leave it in the comments and I will try to get back to you guys as soon as possible. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it very helpful for your upcoming trip to Costa Rica, give it a like, give it a thumbs up down there. As I mentioned earlier, subscribe to the channel if you are planning a trip or if you just are curious about life in Costa Rica in general. And yeah. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys real soon. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your adventure. Ciao.